stop it. Sit on down. Thank y'all so much for coming out. We appreciate y'all. How y'all feel? Y'all good? Yeah. All right, listen, y'all in for a good show. This guy, man, listen, very funny. He, he was on the Inside Out Jokes comedy show, the low-key comedy show. He performs all over town, all over the world, making nice and loud for my guy, the very funny John Taylor. <laughs> One more time for Malik B. Let him hear it. Let him hear it. All you beautiful people, sit down. Sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm having a week. You ever have one of those weeks where something really good and something really bad happens to you so you don't know what type of motivational quote to post on Facebook? <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. We're going to start with the bad news. Uh, I got cheated on this week. It gets worse. I got cheated on by my side chick. And... Um, <laughs> I didn't see that shit coming, you know? You should be able to trust your side chick. And I was her side chick, okay? She was in a shitty relationship. I was in a shitty relationship. We decided to do this thing. And she went and she fucked somebody else. And I was just so hurt. She tried to talk to me. She's like, John, I just think we should see other people. I said, woman, we are the other people, okay? That's <laughs> what this is. So I got mad. I got in my feelings. I didn't want to, like, like, do anything physical. I went through her phone. And I just called her boyfriend, let him know straight up, yo, Sandra's cheating on us. How do you want to proceed? What do you want to do, you know? So then he goes to tell me, so you mean my fiance of five years, someone's supposed to marry next month is cheating on me? Right? And then it hit me. This dude is so selfish. Don't make the shit all about you. Like, I'm going through the shit too, you know? So I'm in a shitty relationship, then I'm getting cheated on by somebody I've never been in a relationship with. Like, at some point, you just run out of Drake songs. There's just not enough Drake out there to get you through your life. But I got some good news this week, too. I got invited to apply for a black card. Any black card holders in the audience? Y'all fucking lying. This is a free show. <laughs> Let me explain. Black cards is a card made by American Express. It's made completely out of metal. You can buy whatever you want with it. Like, strictly for rich people, like cars, yachts, slaves, whatever you need to get you through your rich life, right? But I got slided because I didn't get like the American Express version. I got the MasterCard version and I don't want a second rate black card. Like I don't want the light skin, wavy hair, green eye version of the black card, you know? Like I want my black card to be so black that police shoot it unarmed. Like that's how black I want my black card to be. I want black card to be so black it's made out of vibranium and it says Wakanda on it. That's how black I want my black card to be. I want my black card to be so black that I get 4% cash back on child support. That's how black I want my black card to be. So I'm trying to like get money elsewhere. Uh, this is what I'm doing. I'm shopping at Ross. And if you don't know, Ross is a store for broke people with fuck you money. Like whenever you got like $80 American, take that shit to the Ross clearance section. It turns into $120 really fucking fast. The only thing is I don't like the way they treat you at Ross. As soon as you get out the car, you're on a security camera. You're greeted by loss prevention. Like, Ross is the only store that makes it feel like jail has a gift shop. You know, like, it's just too fucking intense. And what are they guarding? The shoes are never masked up together. The shirts are on the floor with fingerprints. I'm pretty sure Ross is the only store to sell evidence, is what I'm trying to say. Like, this is not just my hot outfit. This is part of somebody's cold case right here, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a missing person outfit. That store is so nasty. Like, I don't even walk inside a Ross without a condom on. I just don't trust the shit. That's when I knew COVID was real, when it was like, it's too dirty to shop a Ross. I was like, hey, now let's be fucking with some shit. Um, I'm an essential worker for the next two weeks, and then I go back to being a minimum wage nigga. Um... <laughs> The thing about being an essential worker is like, I, I work at a hospital, right? So they had me staying in the Beverly Hilton. I was getting room service. I was one of the first people to get vaccinated. And I found out the hard way, if you're crusting the fuck you did in the pandemic, it's not gonna happen at all. Cause I called this chick. I was like, yo, I'm vaccinated. You wanna come through? She's like, no, nah, I'm good. I was like, but this dick could save your life though. Like you don't wanna get this? She's like, nah, I'm straight. Like, who turns down communion? That's what I'm trying to say. You know, like, this is the body of Christ right here. I'm trying to share with my followers. She was not feeling it. 
I don't know if, uh, if, if it came from China. I think Tulum had something to do with fucking COVID because I never heard of that place until last year. <laughs> and then it was the most popping place in the whole world. I've never met anybody who was Tuluminum. That's all I'm saying. Like, I just never seen somebody like that. I hated it when they, um, when they closed down the oceans. You guys remember that shit? They closed the fucking oceans. That was depressing for me because, like, I run. I'm a marathon runner. That's where I do, do my long runs. But it's also depressing because I lost a friend to COVID. He was a surfer. And we can honor him as a surfer. I don't know if you guys know. They do this thing called a paddle out. You go to the middle of the ocean. You say some nice shit. And that's how you remember him. We couldn't do that. So we had to choose another aspect of his life. He was an Uber driver. And um, we all just got in our cars and drove down to LAX and drove in that circle. And just talked about how overrated in and out was. Because that's all, that's all we could fucking do. We had some deaths that were non-COVID related. Um, when Kobe passed, that shit hit me personally. That was, you know, LA, five rings, like that sucks. When Kobe and Gianna and seven others passed, I learned a lot from that death. Uh, one is that you gotta do everything you can when you can. Mama mentality, attack every day, go for that shit. And two, right? And this is probably the most important part. Make sure you're the most famous person on your flight because um, <laughs> If I crash, you got to say my motherfucking name. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going down as seven others. I'm not going to be a background dancer in my own fucking death. It's just not going to happen. <sighs> Lost Chadwick Bozeman. You know the crazy thing about celebrity deaths? Whenever a celebrity dies, everybody goes to that Instagram page and starts following that celebrity. <laughs> There's no more pictures coming. Trust me, that's it. Like, that's all that's about to happen right there. Chadwick Boseman got three million followers after he died. You got to do something with that, right? I would post one more picture of Chadwick hoping like a Popeye's chicken sandwich and just like, I had to come back and see what all this fuss is about, you know? Like, Louisiana forever is what I'm trying to say. Just three million followers, man. One thing that didn't close during the pandemic was unarmed black kids getting shot. They was lighting that shit up like 4th of July. It just kept happening. <laughs> the worst one was the lady who grabbed the gun and said, taser, 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 and shot that kid. I don't think that's like what's really going through her mind. Like if a girl hops in my car, I can't go Bentley, Bentley, Bentley. It's still a 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Like it's just not what you say it's gonna be. They had companies tweeting like Black Lives Matter and people wanted to boycott the companies. <laughs> ben and Jerry's put out a tweet that said Black Lives Matter. People wanted to stop eating ice cream. People wanted to boycott slow churn deliciousness because they want equality for all. If we're going to boycott Ben and Jerry's, let's do it for the right reasons. Let's do it because of brain freezes. Okay, let's make it worth something. Plus, I like when Ben and Jerry's gets behind the cause because they make a flavor that goes with the cause. Like when Barack ran the first time, they had Yes, P. Can instead of Yes, We Can for his slogan. <laughs> when Jeremy Lin was turning up in New York, they had Taste of the Insanity and it had like, no, this is real shit. <laughs> they did. It had like fortune cookies and ginger and sesame. So I was like, what's that black flavor going to be? What's that black flavor going to be? They made this flavor and it was kind of black. They called it empowerment. It had like brownies and fudge and cinnamon swirl. I was like, all right, that's kind of black. <laughs> but the second flavor they made, it was too black. Like, it tasted like child support. Like, um, it tasted like $1,125 a month for the next 18 years. You understand what I'm saying? And if you ate it after the expiration date, it kind of tastes like garnished wages. Like, it just took it straight from your account. So I'm eating this flavor, and I'm like, why does it taste like this? How does it taste like this? I look at the ingredients. They're like, here at Ben & Jerry's, we use only the finest missing birthdays, <laughs> weekend visitations, child custody battles. I go down to the Ben & Jerry's store to see if they have the flavor. They're like, you know what? We got it. Okay, we got some of it. Okay, it's going to be late this month. The child support is going to be late this month, but come back next month. And we're going to have the sprinkles, too. That's the child support. Anybody, like, anybody raised by a single mom? Thank you.
Thank you. I know I'm not the only one. Was anybody raised to be a single mom? My mom told me at a young age, John, you need no nigga to make your life what you want it to be. And I was like, mom, thank you. She was like, you can do all things through Whitney Houston who strengthens you. I grew up single mom and two sisters. So I know how to talk to females really fucking well. The only problem is I don't know how to go from conversation to penetration. Like, I don't know how to do that shit. Like, I might not be the guy who makes you come, but I am the guy who makes you comfortable. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I just, I'm a sweetheart. Grew up, one TV, cooking shows on all the goddamn time. Like, I don't know how to whip ass, but I know how to whip cream. You understand? Like, I just... But um, when Ben and & Jerry's and all the companies started supporting Black Lives Matter, we did get our first guilty verdict with the George Floyd trial, and that was pretty cool. That was pretty fucking cool. And 99% of me was happy. 1% really wanted to go looting. You know, like I just wanted that not guilty because I missed looting last time. I didn't get to go. Uh, I was busy losing weight during COVID, so I didn't know what size to steal from the stores, you know? Like, I don't want to be the only person in the changing room like, yo, does this, does this Black Lives Matter fit? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Like you guys, I was watching a lot of Netflix. Um, I want somebody I can watch Netflix with, though. Because when, you're, when you got somebody, it's Netflix and chill. But when you're single, it's Netflix and still. Um, let me explain. Netflix and still is when you're four episodes into the same series and then Netflix goes, are you still watching The Office? Like, is that what we doing all fucking day today? Yes, Netflix. If there's hope for Jim, there's hope for all of us. You know what I'm saying? I just like, I have to stop watching Netflix because like, you ever start a show with somebody you're dating then you break up so now you can't finish that fucking show? Me and my girl used to watch Narcos together, which is, of course, about Colombia and the drug lords. So, like, if anybody plays that theme song, I think about her. If a girl's speaking Spanish, I think about her. I had to do, I had to stop doing cocaine just to get this broad off my mind. Do you understand? <laughs> she fucked up my coke habit, man. I watched too much Netflix during the pandemic because, like, now I don't know how to talk to people in real life. Like, this guy was talking to me, and the store was getting hella boring, and I'd start hitting him in the chest. He was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm looking for the fucking skip intro button. Just get to the shit. Like, get past this. Your theme song is trash, fam. <laughs> Trying to go back to the gym. I lost a little bit of weight during COVID. Um, but the gym is the same. People don't know how to act. Like, I hate the muscular dudes that wear the really, really tight shirts, like the nipples are on hard on 10 all the time. <laughs> That's, that's okay, though. I hate the people who cut the shirt. It looks like a necktie, you know what I'm saying? Like this one guy, he was walking around the gym, it's supposed to say Puma, but it just said, um, with nipple quotation marks. It's like, um, where's the rest of your shirt? Because this shit ain't even legal right here. <laughs> Trying to do dating. Uh, I don't do good in online dating because like I look thuggish, but I sound like this, so people think they got a defective Negro when they show up. Like. Imagine if you bought a Ferrari, right? And you want that shit to go vroom, but it's just like meow. Like it's not the same <laughs> veracity. But I know what I am. I play to my strengths. Like I'm like the marijuana of black guys. You understand what I'm saying? Like don't go straight from a Chad to a Trayvon. Get you some John Taylor to make that transition. <laughs> Smooth that shit out. You understand what I'm saying? Come to me, get all your prerequisites. I'm gonna help you with that. I'm gonna teach you about hot sauce, like that's what I do. Well, another thing I don't like about Tinder is that uh, they will blur your matches if you don't pay, which is bullshit. Cause at least with prostitution, you're paying the fuck. With Tinder, I'm paying so I can hopefully tell you a dad joke that will let me date you. Like it's not even worth it. Worst case scenario, I met this one girl, I had paid Tinder Gold, met her in real life. I was like, you know what? We need to put the blur back on you because this is not <laughs> what I thought I was about to get. <laughs> Hate online dating. Um, I'm, I'm fresh out of an eight-year relationship. Like, it hasn't even been that long. It's only been about four years. And um, 
My ex-girlfriend keeps posting from our joint Yelp account that we had when we were together. So every time she goes out with her new boo, I get the notification about how awesome the date was. The last date was like, it was cool to go to Benihana and not have to use the dirty dollar gift certificate, John Taylor. And I'm like, okay, that's a little personal. And then she's like, the drink portions are kind of small. The food, eh. But the dick I got last night? And then the worst part about the review is eight people found that shit useful. So now I'm just that guy with bad dick and gift certificates. You know what I'm saying? That's not, that's not who I am. I promise you. Promise you. I slid in too many DMs during the pandemic. Um, yeah, it was bad. Like... The worst part about the DMs is that you can say whatever you want on a DM and it'll let that shit slide. But if you were like to comment on a picture or try to unfollow somebody, they'll ask you like, oh, hey, are you sure you want to unfollow this person? But if a girl's posting a thirst trap with a thong, I can put, I'll suck a fart out you. <laughs> and they'll just let me put that shit. Instagram, I need you to ask me right now, hey, are you sure you want to post I'll suck a fart out you? Like, is that what we doing, John Taylor? Get your priorities to help me help you. <laughs> My DMs were like community college. Like, if you was 18 and you live close by, I had a class for you. You know what I'm saying? Just come on, get this lesson. Get this lesson. I had uh, two birthdays during the pandemic, right? That sucked. Um, I turned 36 this year, and I don't feel old, but there's things that happen to let you know you're getting old. Like, I think you're getting old when your favorite porn star needs hit surgery, and that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> One of my favorite porn stars, the guy who raised me, Lexington Steele, needs hip surgery. Um, and I've been watching this dude for like 20 years, okay? I'm gonna be honest. Like, our anniversary's next month, okay? I'm, like, that's how close. Because he... I didn't see my dad till weekends. I saw Lexington still every night at 11.30. He was the first man to teach me what the word interracial meant. Cause like my mom just told me that was a sellout, but Lexington still was like, nah, if you fuck the reparations out these broads, you can cross the lines, it's all good. He needs hip surgery, man. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it to his retirement ceremony where they hang up his condom, but um, I wanted to honor him. You know, I wanted to do something to salute him. So I just got my lotion and shot it in the air 20 times. It's like, thank you for your service. I watched. Like, did anybody else run out of porn during the pandemic? Like, I got to wait for next season. Do you understand what I'm saying? I got to wait for more people to turn 18. That's what happened. <laughs> I've seen it all. I have seen it all. I caught, I caught the worst thing you could catch during uh, COVID, which of course is feelings. Um, I got in a relationship I didn't want to be in. Like you ever text somebody and it's supposed to be a casual conversation, but it turns into the breakup conversation? Like I wanted to text this chick, we should get some Chinese takeout. What I texted her is we should get some Chinese breakup. And um, it didn't go smooth, right? She was like, what are you trying to say, John? What are you trying to say? I was like, look, I'm really craving some shrimp low. Maybe we should see other people. Like, it's just not. She's like, this is too much. I was like, you know what? Fuck the Chinese. Let's make pizza, okay? Let's get some DiGiorno. It's not delivery. It's not you, it's me. I just can't do this shit. No more. Bad relationships. Bad relationships, abusive relationships. I, w I dated a girl who was 4'11". <laughs> she was 4'11 and bananas. And when I say she was bananas, I mean she was light-skinned and she bruised easily. Like, she just could not... I'm joking. I would never hit her. I would never hit her. Sweet girl, sweet girl, but crazy as fuck. Crazy as fuck. Jealous. Like, she's the type to read your text messages before they even send them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she knew what the bitch was going... I know she's about to text you. I was in that relationship for eight years, never got married, never got engaged, nothing to show for it, eight years. I was like, this is community college all over again. Just the same <laughs> dumb bullshit. 
I don't know. I think I want to, I don't want to get married, but I do want to get engaged. Like, I want to be able to cheat and keep all my shit. You know, I don't want you to take half in case shit goes wrong. Anybody have, uh, like, anybody get married during quarantine? No? My sister got married during quarantine. My older sister got married. Don't clap for that shit. Don't clap. That's selfish. You're supposed to love, honor, and respect each other to what? Death do you part. Death was doing its whole fucking part for a year, okay? Like, don't get married during quarantine. Death was doing everybody's part. Death was basically Eddie Murphy and the Nutty Professor, just doing everything at once. Um, for my last birthday, my sister took me to the Queen Mary, uh, which is in Long Beach. It's this permanently dock ship, and we had brunch there. And I realized, as a black man, I've made it, okay? As a black man, let me explain. <laughs> my ancestors came over here on a ship, a slave ship, packed tightly together. I'm on a ship made for royalty, eating made-to-order omelets, <laughs> apple to cut bacon, crab legs, so what I'm trying to say is every black person should experience this brunch. And if I'm being honest, a white person should have to pay for it because <laughs> white people, you owe us a good time on a ship. Like that needs to be cast in. And it can't be a dolphin cruise. It can't be a whale watching. It has to be the Queen Mary for these two reasons, okay? One, it has to be a ship that's built for royalty. Okay, we got that out the way. That needs to happen. And two, and this is the most important part. That ship can't go nowhere. Where the fuck I get on is where the fuck I get off. We're not falling for the dumb shit twice in a row. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to talk about it, but black men were part of the slave trade. At one point, we were considered caste. Do you understand? Okay? So that means in our history, a president has been to a strip club and made it rain slaves on a bitch. Like just throwing, like future might show up with racks on racks on racks, right? Thomas Jefferson showed up with blacks on blacks on blacks. Make it chain on a bitch, just. They don't wanna have that conversation. Like, Black people don't get credit for anything they do. Like, do you realize that Harriet Tubman was the world's first Uber driver? <laughs> she was the first person to get you from where you didn't want to be to where you needed to go. You understand? <laughs> she would just pull up to the plantation. Uh, Cleophis, North, hop in. Let's go. <laughs> and they don't give her no credit. We don't have a Harriet Tubman day. We don't have no streets after name after Harriet Tubman. Who ran more streets than Harriet Tubman? Nobody. So from now on, every street going to the north, that's the Harriet Tubman, okay? We're doing it like that. <laughs> if you're trying to go from Long Beach to the valley, I'm going to need you to hop on that 710 Harriet Tubman. Take it to the 105 West, get on the 405 Harriet Tubman, and keep going till you hit Sherman Way. Because Martin Luther King gets all the credit, gets all the streets. And I think that's, I think we named the wrong shit after Martin Luther King. Do you know what Martin Luther King should have named after him? Mattresses. <laughs> Name one person who had a more important dream than Martin Luther King. Okay? And then like Martin Luther King, <laughs> you could have like a Martin Luther Tempur-Cuter King, a Martin Luther, Luther, you know, like it's just, it, it writes the own shit. And I even got a slogan. Martin Luther King mattresses, we shall oversleep. Just, you know, good rest. But <laughs> one thing they did do, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, it was actually just came out in the news recently. They did have the Martin Luther King Foundation invest in a line of booty care. Um, it's called I Have a Cream. And um, I don't know. I, I, I hate when people try to like, because they, they took Aunt Jemima and they took Uncle Ben off the shit and now there's no more black stuff. And that's not right. That's not right. Because you know what? As sad as it is to say, there's a lot of shit we do because we buy the food from where it's made. Like anybody, tell me this. Think about this. Does anybody else buy their barbecue sauce based on how racist the city it's made in? <laughs> right? 
Because you don't know what Memphis tastes like, but you're like, you know what? That's some spicy shit right there. I got that. <laughs> so for instance, if you get your barbecue sauce from a place where the mayor hasn't done blackface or <laughs> women still have a right to an abortion, you're doing it wrong, okay? Like my favorite black, my favorite barbecue sauce is Jack Daniels. Does anybody know where that's made? Tennessee. Does anybody know the city? Lynchburg, Tennessee. <laughs> Population of Lynchburg, Tennessee is 99% white and one black dude just hanging. Like he's not even, he's not even alive. And y'all gonna hate me for this, but my favorite flavor of Jack Daniels is hickory and they spell it with three K's. And like, I just, it's got the extra kick into it. Like, say what you want about the South, okay? But barbecue is the art of slow burning wood. And when it comes down to slow burning wood, the South has that shit down to a T. <laughs> but it works, it works in reverse too. Like, we're LA, we can talk about it. I don't trust fried chicken unless it's served to me through a bulletproof window. Like, I need that. <laughs> I need 11 herbs and spices and three inches of glass or else I just don't, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. I hate when they try to cancel people like, uh, some people need to be canceled. Like Paula Dean, she was racist, but I still make her cobbler. Am I a sellout? Does that? <laughs> she had this one dish, it was like a popcorn chicken dish and it was, it was you know, the bite-sized chicken and it was good but she called it spicy chicken niggets. And I was like, ah, oh, Paula, why? Why? I got the recipe if you want it, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, 36. Um, I realize now, like as I'm older, some of the shit I was afraid of as a kid doesn't scare me as much as an adult. Like, remember when you were a kid and the haunted house was like one of the most scariest things you could think of, right? Fucking ghosts. But I thought of some shit. A ghost will only fuck with you if you got your shit together. You've always heard of a haunted house, right? You ever hear about a haunted studio apartment? You ever go over to your friend's house and the girl be like, girl, my kitchenette is tripping. I put the dishes in and they just disappear. They don't fuck with you if you can't afford it. Because <laughs> a ghost, like the whole thing about a ghost is they want to get even. You kill them, they want to get even with you. It's almost like they ask the ghost, hey, do you want to still hunt John Taylor? Okay, what's he doing? Um, he has a studio apartment in Hawthorne. All right, I guess we even. We can just call it. We can just call it even. <laughs> I'm not afraid of ghosts anymore. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, so yeah, I did lose a lot of weight during COVID. I lost like, I lost 30 pounds, right? Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. You can save the woos though, because my DMs have been empty this whole year, so I don't need that. Um, <laughs> worst part about it though, I'm still in the friend zone with this one chick at work. I work at a hospital, like I said. And she works in patient transport. So she's like, she's in charge of bringing patients like with wheelchairs and gurneys down to the floor for radiology. And so it's become to the point where like, if I hear a wheelchair, my dick will get hard just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Cause like I, she might be attached to it. I was making out with this one girl. We we're going to the bedroom. She's like, Johnny, you're not really in it. Like, do you want me to talk dirty to you? Do you want, do you want me to put on some stuff? I was like, no, nah, just, Put on an episode of ER, like, you know, let's the <laughs> put on a life alert commercial, okay? We can, we can do this still. All right, thank you guys for listening. My name is John Taylor. Give it up for your host, Malik B. This has been a Funny Media Group production.